Now, obviously, Lindsay Shaw and Chrissy Carlson Romano blocked me instead of making an apology or reaching out or not even making an apology to me, but maybe the survivor's friend and the survivor that reached out to Chrissy Carlson Romano. There was no apology. And at first, I was just blocked by their individual uh, pages. So Chrissy Carlson Romano, Lindsay Shaw on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok. Now I'm also blocked by the podcasts. <laughs> so Podco and vulnerable podcasts that I was on that I shared my, you know, deepest traumas. I got blocked there too. You know, I will live. This is not like, ah, you know, it just is triggering and, and sad um, for me because I spent two hours of my life on there, giving my trauma, sharing it hoping to create change, just to be erased and blocked. Ironically enough, I am still pinned on Chrissy Carlson Romano's TikTok page, someone told me, because I guess I got 2.2 million views, and in my opinion, there's a flex there to flex the views of her podcast, and it looks like Allison Stoner, me, and someone else is what she's flexing. On YouTube, she deleted all of it, but then decided to just keep the pin there, in my opinion, to just share how many views it got. And, you know, after making my open letter with Chrissy Carlson Romano, I thought, I'm moving on from here. I said what I needed to say. I, I felt like I was very fair and honest and vulnerable. And then someone sent me a comment that was on one of Lindsay Shaw's reels. And the reason why... I was triggered by this isn't because of the troll. I see trolls all the time on Twitter, on Instagram, as a survivor. I get a bunch of DMs sometimes that are very, very scary, to be quite honest with you. That wasn't what made this particularly triggering. It was that Lindsay Shaw hearted this dehumanizing comment, commented back and said thank you with a prayer emoji. You're not going to apologize, sure, but to have the time to respond to something that was so dehumanizing, full of mental health stigma, when, by the way, a lot of Podco's, I think all of them, actually, are sponsored by BetterHelp. And I've heard some not good things about BetterHelp, so that's a whole other story. And, you know, here she is completely ignoring the effects of what this individual commented. I'm gonna share here today, obviously, what I posted on Twitter and maybe just say one thing directed at Lindsay Shaw, close the chapter here. So I said here, Lindsay Shaw does not give a F, I was very triggered here, F about mental health. This is beyond disgusting slash disturbing behavior towards a survivor of child SA. And I will be reaching out to your sponsor, BetterHelp, about this. Here's where it all began. So someone bowed 17. By the way, I didn't find this because I'm blocked. Someone sent this to me. Alexa is a psycho who keeps using bigger names to be talked about. And she has this clickbaity titles on YouTube that are cringy as hell. She tries to use the victim card all the time, but she will never be as relevant as Jeanette's or the other bigger Nick stars. So yeah, Lindsay Shaw responds with thank you and, and hearted the comment. I got called psycho, which by the way, I am not psycho and using that term is extremely problematic. But what I found really sad about it was that she was liking the fact that this individual put Nick Starr's trauma, like their individual traumas, on a hierarchy and was trying to create relevancy for each Nick Starr when it came to their voice, when it came to who they are and what they've experienced. It's just really sad that this is still happening. We're encouraging bullying we're encouraging mental health stigmas i see these troll bots or whatever you want to call them regularly 
dismissing allyship when it comes to survivors. And then here I see somebody who used to be my best friend literally liking it and and giving a prayer emoji to it. I have no tears in me left, to be quite honest with you. Like, I don't feel, I feel sad about it. But really, what I really feel now is I really hope that Lindsay one day, you know, looks back at this and sees that this wasn't the right move. This doesn't set a good example. It doesn't encourage kindness. It doesn't encourage compassion. It doesn't encourage anything good, really. It encourages bullying, mental health stigma, discrediting survivors. I'm just hoping that one day she looks at this and she maybe becomes an ally for survivors like myself who have been so courageous and speaking out, telling their stories when all cards were stacked up against them. You know, there's, there's really nothing else to say there. I'm just really wishing her a change of heart. And I'm not the kind of person to sit here and talk about her past. But I do hope that her future is more compassionate than her present. So that's how I feel about that. And I don't want anyone out there thinking that one person's story is more relevant than another. We're so much better than that. There's no hierarchy to trauma. There's no hierarchy to personal stories. All of it matters. Because I'm done waiting for an apology. <laughs> I'm done waiting for an apology. I'm so, so over it. 